Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Folks, we've got a busy week. We had a busy week this past week, and the week before that was pretty busy also, too. I mean, some very interesting things are happening. In fact, the elections are going on right now. I mean, we got we got an election right now. We got we got the, the the debates and everything else is going on right now on the two. The presidential election is still there. Oh, well, it, yeah. it's still there. We're okay. we're still discussing these issues. Mm-hmm. And in all due respect, so in all due respect, maybe that's a good sign. That's a good sign because the rationale, the point I'm making here is that uh, uh, last week was a busy week, and then all of a sudden uh, that weekend, that past weekend. We had this whole big demonstration down in Virginia, in Charlottesville aspect of it. And uh, for many of us, in all due respect, who don't read newspapers, who can't afford Comcast, <laughs> who don't look at TV, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that was huge, folks. And what we're going to do this particular sh- this particular show, we're going to share this with you and tell you what the significance of that, that event was all about. But more specifically, what does it do for you here personally in Oregon? in Portland, Oregon, and we're going to discuss it that way, okay? So, and then what I've been doing, I've been throwing out a theme and trying to figure out what kind of a theme can we can we throw on the table that will resonate from the standpoint that we all need to be a part of the process of a solution, and that is that having to discuss, the, the, the brand would be race, racism and hate, hate and racism, that's the key, and we're all, we're all affected and impacted by it. So the name of the game is that that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be trying to figure out a solution. We're going to, first, we've got to find out where, how it come about, so to, be, so to speak. And then at the end of the day, is that, okay, now here are the results in a positive way. Got me? Mm-hmm. So that's kind of like where we're going to be coming. That's the brand. And I got, I've got two people here today with me that, in all due respect, have spent many, many hours, many, many hours, foot time, the whole nine yard, out there in community. I, as far as I'm concerned, they're, they're probably my, one of my two top... As one of one of one of the state's two top uh, activists, community activists uh, in the country, as far as I'm concerned. But we got them in Portland, Oregon, and they're right here. But you know, they, they, but but it's very important that we know that. But they got these two guys here. I've got Jamie Partridge. You might have seen Jamie if you if you're in the Portland metropolitan area, up in the, maybe the northeast Portland area. He delivered you. He delivered my my mail for a long time, <laughs> and, I, and I saw him. And I, he also at the, t- at the same time he had enough time to get very much involved in the community. So we want to thank you very much for being here, Jamie, thank and you, also Bruce. thank you for your your time that you've been spending and you're still spending time. You're mm-hmm. not retired. Well, okay. Uh, <laughs> I've stopped working for the the, the People's Postal Service, but I, I'm that's right. You still I'm out just there. working for the people. That's right. I know that for a <laughs> fact. And then we got Danny. You got Danny Bell. Danny's been around here. He's been a community person. He's been very, very active in the community. And, uh, and he's got a lot of wisdom that he brings to the table. Another community active aspect of it. I mean, he's, he's, been, he's been out there. And Danny, we want to thank you, in all due respect, for the many hours you spent trying to deal with the issues of our community. Very much so here in the Portland metro area. Well, not just the community in Portland, but in the state of Oregon and elsewhere around the country. Because I've seen your name elsewhere <coughs> running around. So welcome again. Okay. Thanks a lot. All right, Thanks buddy. for inviting me. Sounds great. Well, like I said, and before that, we we got a couple of little comments. I'm sure you'll be familiar with these areas that uh, we want to make to begin with. Is that Dick Gregory just passed away? Mm-hmm. Dick Gregory just passed away. He was 84 years old. And he died yesterday. Mm-hmm. He passed away yesterday, mm-hmm. and uh, he was a comedian. But then there was a lot of other things that he was very much involved in. Mm-hmm. He was, you know, a civil rights, a civil rights activist, a, a social critic, not just a civil rights. He health was a social care. critic, health care, a writer. Yeah. He was a writer. He was an entrepreneur, a business person, and an actor. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then again, like I said, he, he was a family man. Very much so. And he resided in Washington, D.C. when he passed away. Mm-hmm. So we give kudos to Dick Gregory and, and my friend, yeah. R.I.P. Rest in peace, my brother. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to always remember you. We're going to make sure that we recognize you at the Oregon Voters Digest here. And again, that's Dick Gregory. Dick Gregory. Again, R.I.P. Rest in peace. And then the other guy that was somewhat comparable, another big icon in that arena of comedy, was Jerry Lewis. Jerry Lewis. Jerry, Jerry Lewis died today. He was 91 years old. 91 years old today. 
But he's got two big icons, big guys, you know, comedian types aspect of it. And Jerry, too, was very much involved in community, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of fundraising and things like that. But then here's some of his background. He was an actor, and actually he was a comedian, a singer, film producer, film director, a screenwriter, and a humanitarian. You know, you got two big guys, basically, just, just basically side by side routine, and they knew one another, both, by the way, intimately, mm -hmm. both of them. Well, they yeah. were part of an era. Yes, very they were much part so. of an era in entertainment. Any comments, guys, on that? Well, well share, you know, my my thought? interaction with Dick Gregory was in the uh, the streets of Chicago in at the Democratic National Convention in 1968, when this huge grouping of young people protesting the Vietnam War, wow. you know, were getting beaten up, beaten up by the cops, and we were we wanted to march to the convention center, you mm -hmm. know. And the cops were, were not going to let us. Uh, they said, you can't march to the convention center. And Dick Gregory got up at the microphone. And he said, you know, I want to invite you all to my house. I live over here on the, on the south side, yeah. which happened to be on the other side of the convention center. Right. Just follow me. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Really? And we did. Did you guys it take off? So funny. You guys, you guys, yeah, we did. And it worked. Well, it actually didn't work. The cops did stop us. But, exactly. but you know, mm -hmm. it just gives it you a good. sense of uh, kind of how he inserted was. himself yes. into the movement, yes. but in a humorous way. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. How about you, Danny? Any, any, any kind of well, uh, reflections or something? We brought Dick Gregory here, I believe, in the mid, early 1980s. There was a... Portland, Oregon? Port, no, there was a Portland, Oregon okay. at a um, centenary uh, church. Mm -hmm. Centenary Methodist Church, mm -hmm. you might be familiar with it. Mm -hmm. nice uh -huh. And um, the guy that I worked with was his name is Ray Eaglin. He was well known in the University of Oregon mm -hmm. as a uh, radical personality. Mm -hmm. And um, we brought him here. And I just talked to him briefly, nothing more to say hi and bye. Mm -hmm. But I was proud to say that I was a party to actually bringing him here. That's like 30, 40 years yeah, ago. Yeah. Well, awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, good enough, guys. Well, good. Well, I'll tell you what. Like I say, we want to make sure we remember those these two guys they went back to back, day after one, one or the other. Okay, good. All right. Now, what we're going to do now is that we're just going to get right up in there. And then I guess the way we do that is first, Jamie, I'm just going to jump right on your end of it because mm -hmm. there, there was some activity. Again, like I said, we're going to be, t the idea is to, we're talking about the Virginia and Charlottesville aspect of it, but then its impact on Port, on Oregon, mm -hmm. got me? And for solution-wise, what did we do as a result of what we saw and the activities were there? Maybe you can just kind of share with us basically what the event was all about in that area, so to speak, and then and then we'll just bring it back home and then we'll have a discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jamie, what do you think? Well, what, what happened in Charlottesville just, just a week ago, it seems like it was longer than that, mm -hmm. uh, a week ago Saturday, was a mobilization, the, the biggest um, white nationalist uh, and KKK Nazi mobilization maybe ever. Mm -hmm. um, where there, there was, there was, I think they thought, thought about 500 or 600 mm -hmm. um, who were quite disciplined uh, mm -hmm. and, and um, marching with uh, shields and, and, and helmets and basically invaded the, 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 the college town of Charlottesville to intimidate uh, that, that, uh, that liberal uh, island in, mm -hmm. in uh, Virginia uh, and basically with the, the intention of protecting a Confederate monument that was uh, had been they were deciding to the, mm -hmm. the Charlottesville. So that was uh, the decided, it Yeah, was they were monument. defending the, you know the old South right, right. and and the, the principles right. of the Confederacy and and um, of course um, the the counter protesters were uh, mobilized as well to to de defend their city. Basically, mm -hmm. what happened was the the uh, the fascists, these these uh, white nationalists, uh, systematically assaulted. Um, you know, just took over parts of the city and systematically assaulted uh, vulnerable people, people of color, and attacked the counter-protesters, including, um, the, of course, this young man who was associated with, I think it was called the American Vanguard, one of these uh, Nazi groups, mm -hmm. weaponized his car mm -hmm. and smashed into a, yeah. a group of the uh, counter-protesters, uh, injuring 19 and killing one. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was, it was a similar kind of situation to what happened in Portland, uh, on May 26th, when the uh, the uh, a, a white nationalist, after being uh, part of one of these rallies in Portland, on a max train, intimidated and uh, got in, got involved with a confrontation where he killed two people mm -hmm. in a in a racist mm -hmm. incident. 
So there's been a lot of things going. So on. yeah, people, people, and 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 people who are are you know horrified by this uh, really felt it in, in a, as a real you know gut punch to oh my God, what is happening to mm -hmm. our country? You mm -hmm. know that these things are you know that people are being uh, uh, killed mm -hmm. by these uh, by these racist bigots mm -hmm. uh, and mobilizing in the streets. Uh, you know, and assaulting people like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. You know, one other thing, then going back to the Virginia aspect of it, the, the first, uh, as one would say, the, the first round that was sat over the bow as, re as, re as relate to the Confederacy mm. was the, the flag being taken down, remember? Right. Mm. That was being taken down. In fact, who was that? That was the governor, I guess, of Carolina, right? Was it North Carolina or South Carolina? One of them. I'm but sorry. my point, she's now, she's now the uh, mm -hmm. United Nations representative right. at this point in time. Mm -hmm. I don't know her name right off the bat. Ambassador of the United right. Nations. But the bottom line is that, the, that 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 was the start, so to speak, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden now it evolved in in the statues aspect of it, you know, and and uh, and so like you said, then we had this event, but we had a similar event here, but but it wasn't about the Confederacy flag. I think it was Joy Joy Gibson uh, group, and, and basically gotten a permit mm -hmm. to go to the federal building over there, I guess. And then, and then we had that situation here in the Portland area. Mm -hmm. So we're right into the melee of it all. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Danny, any thoughts? Well, this is part of an inevitable arc where racism has been uh, central to activity as a, a nation state in America. Mm -hmm. um, there, what Trump did, his ability to convey a message that resonated with people that felt totally disaffected. And their reason for living, the reason for being, mm -hmm. they have posited that in what they call their culture or their way of life. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's like a move of desperation. Uh, there's a book called The Hundred Little Hitlers. I know you might have heard of it. It's written by a woman in Portland. It's about Tom Mesker and the Siwa incident. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, was it uh, Mulligeta Seurat, the right. killing in 1988? Right. Yeah. And uh, she's a um, journalist, and she documents how that evolved and what the, the life of the participants who actually killed Seurat, mm -hmm. what that looks like. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of it is that you have a group of disaffected people who are living their lives in quiet desperation, and to give it meaning, they act out. It's almost like uh, some kind of interpretation of tribal, you know, activity. This is how they act out and validate themselves. So this is part of a long continuum. This continuum has been going on ever since the Constitution and how they molded the Constitution and the preamble. Because it goes back to the cotton gin when mm -hmm. the founding fathers put that document together, they had envisioned dismantling slavery. Mm -hmm. But with the invention of the cotton gin, which was by a black person, by the way, that made cotton that made cotton a, a, a lucrative product because it used to take six weeks to get the cotton seeds out of cotton. Mm. So the all, mechanic, all of, yeah, the mechanics mechanic, of it. Yeah, right, right. So all of a sudden, you had this very profitable uh, product, agricultural product, and you needed labor to get the product, right? Mm -hmm. So now you have an economic rationale to justify racism. You see what I'm saying? So that's uh, obstructed what the founding fathers had envisioned about dismantling slavery. And another thing slavery did was it devalued the northern workforce because the northerners were competing against a labor force that all you had to do was put clothes on the back and put food in the belly. Couldn't so, compete. That's that, right. that north-south thing. Right. So then you get a classic Roman uh, type of approach where you divide and conquer. You see what I'm saying? And you well, as that, a, a labor person yeah, would understand that. That's what Frederick Douglass said. He mm -hmm. said they divide, the, 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 they divide each other mm -hmm. to conquer, they divide, divide the two mm -hmm. to conquer each. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You know, so you ended mm -hmm. up in a civil war with the, mm -hmm. the poor white 
fighting against the poor white, mm -hmm. you know, the, the Union Army and the, mm -hmm. and the, mm -hmm. and the Confederate mm -hmm. Army, and the, somehow the poor whites were so identified with their white skin mm -hmm. that they can't, couldn't identify with the, the laborer in black skin who right. was basically living a similar lifestyle, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. enslaved. Mm -hmm. Well, they had white skin croppers too. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of propaganda out here. At one point in time, you can get this on a OPB, we have a, a, a bunch of series on it. When the United States was first set up, there's some really interesting things. Everybody who had the, the financial wherewithal, black, white, Indian, or whatever, could own a slave. And the most, then another thing happened. The first case to go to the Supreme Court was one black man owned another black man, and he uh, went to court and filed suit. About what? Being a slave. Being a slave. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Were they competing for a slave? Or no. He, I didn't get it, but that is the first case to that go the to the case. American Supreme Court. Okay, so the idea is where that, a guy challenges slavery uh, by another black man. Ah, uh, so it's okay. black on black this time. Right, right, wow. right. Wow. Well, now, so, was that during the Lincoln era? Oh, this was way before Lincoln. Before this was in the 1700s. Okay, so Lincoln basically. I mean, that is the very. Now, look, as long as they had a Supreme Court. That's how far back it goes, and that goes back into wow. the 1700s, wow. not the 1800s. Wow. Lincoln was the uh, mid 1800s, which is 1860. Right. right. But all this stuff is incremental. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they say uh, uh, Andrew Jackson was the, the person that was responsible for the Civil War because his personality was so, uh, you know, divisive. You know, he shot a man on the lawn in the White House. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> mm. So you have this economic component that right. has to be justified mm -hmm. and validated. Mm -hmm. And then if you have poor whites who are also sharecroppers and who, by the way, could also be indigenous servants. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? The thing with an indigenous servant, after they put in their three, five years, then they got five acres or whatever acres. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But after you codify slavery and codify it by color, then it makes it much more manageable in terms of social control. Interesting, control. interesting. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. right. And then you have uh, the element of, of validating, white people could easily validate their um, import in life by saying, I'm white and I'm better than you. Well, and also they, they, get, they got land and they got, uh, mm -hmm. they got to be on the slave patrol. They right, paid, right. Paid, mm -hmm. paid to be mm -hmm. on the slave patrol. So it's kind of like being, a, you know, Rome had several classes of citizens, you know, first mm -hmm. citizen, second citizen, all the way down to slaves, etc. Okay, okay. It's a very similar uh, operation. It's almost like a caste system like they have in India. Mm -hmm. And the people is just like now. You got billionaires and gazillionaires trying to vie for control to divvy up Things for himself. What is it? So, 05 percent of the population has ninety nine percent of the wealth in America. Yeah. So it's all economics. Well, and, and what we've been seeing yeah. over the last couple decades mm -hmm. is wages have been stagnant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, people and people's housing costs are going up, and medical costs mm -hmm. are going up, and you know, you you got this this huge. Uh, Suicide and opioid uh, yeah, addiction epidemic, yeah. epidemic yeah. among mm -hmm. white people. Yeah, big time. And, mm -hmm. and it, that's the desperate desperation you're talking. We're talking mm -hmm. about yeah. here. And and the uh, the the Trump phenomenon has mm -hmm. has allowed mm -hmm. people to focus that on not on the one percent mm -hmm. where all the money's going, mm -hmm. uh, but rather at black people, immigrants, right. Muslims, mm -hmm. you know, LGBTQ well, a, folk. a well-known technique in, in, in political uh, social control mm -hmm. where uh, people, it's like a glass ceiling. Well, that's me. I, that, you project that, and then that becomes you because mm -hmm. you're white. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. But the fact, but, but again, going back to our But original, I want to talk about uh, okay. the wealth. But okay, but More people are getting wealthier and wealthier but they're all in the same strata. Okay, but again, I'm, I'm, again, the big, this one issue that we're kind of talking about mm -hmm. right now is the whole issue of racism. Yep, don't forget and, and ra Racism and um, women they hate, mm -hmm. hate and racism. Mm -hmm. And here we are in, the, in this situation right now. Mm -hmm. And then you ask yourself the question, one of the things is you, as you were talking about this history, mm -hmm. uh, this history of racism and hate, actually to a certain degree, mm -hmm. from the layman's standpoint, sort of originated with Lincoln because he was shot and identified mm -hmm. as the slavery aspect of mm -hmm. it. But a lot of times, that history that you're talking about is never taught in the schools. Right. I mean, every president had an issue. 
mm -hmm. and policy and solution mm -hmm. when they were elected on the issue of hate and racism. Mm -hmm. Every president from Lincoln on mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. talked to the issue of race. His was the Civil War mm -hmm. aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And then, then every every president, think about that, every president, mm -hmm. but I've not done all that research, but the mm -hmm. fact of the matter is, here we are sitting today, mm -hmm. and this president is talking about race and hate. Oh, yes, he is. Now, the name of the game is that, now, he's, he's, he's been there, what, about eight months now or whatever? Oh. And, and it's getting heated up, but, you know, with technology and this, that, and the other, people are getting involved to a certain mm -hmm. degree. So now it's kind of like being pushed in the front of the line, as if to say, and uh, to a certain degree, I, I think that we're going to really get to some sort of a solution of some sort. And, uh, you know, for instance, the First Amendment right, I'm just throwing that out on the table. Mm -hmm. He said everybody has a right to speech, right, the free freedom of speech aspect of it. But then when that, that situation happened up in, in, in Charlottesville aspect of it, everyone knew that there was going to be a problem. And, and the, uh, the governor uh, issued, allowed the, allowed the permit to be given mm -hmm. to an entity. Mm -hmm. And the mayor, I think, didn't say too much but about But that's part the, of our political the process. Police. But again, the police. So mm -hmm. my point is that uh, some, some questions, are, well, is, maybe we need to go back and revisit the First Amendment and say, well, okay, fine, if we know in fact that there's going to be a danger, maybe we, we may have a, what do you call it, an addendum or something that says, hey, if that's going to happen, bang, this is oh, how we're going to handle it. What do you think about that? Well, there's a lady here named uh, <laughs> Leslie Gregory, and she has been lobbying for at least uh, five to seven years to have the um, CDC, the Center for Disease Control, Okay. Uh, recognize racism as a mental health issue. Okay. And when we start talking about hate, we're talking about emotions. And, uh, you know, I've been through anger management, this, that, the other. And we start looking at anger and hate and emotions. Those are all irrational operations. Uh, I've been through the system on both sides. I work with the uh, U.S. DAs. I work with Multnomah County DAs. And what I find fascinating that at that level, where you're working with violence and raw emotion, one of the most uh, frequent reasons for acting out violently is loss of control of emotions. Mm. And that's interpreted and as what a about race? minute. As you that's me. interpreted as a matter of respect. Okay, okay, so okay. Respect, anger, and hate are all interconnected. Mm -hmm. And if we don't examine that element, just like Martin Luther King said, all we can do with laws and policy is jerry rig. But you didn't mention race when you when you when you identified those different elements. Mm -hmm. Is race part and parcel of that? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm just well, I would like to hear what Jamie has to say. No, no, but, but I'm just. Uh, but yeah. the point I'm making, mm -hmm. the point I'm making, we, we, we're talking about ra race. racism and hate. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so as we go through this discussion aspect of mm -hmm. it, I'm just saying that's it's very prominent now about mm -hmm. the whole issue of race. Mm -hmm. You got one thing, I think, boom, it's race, mm -hmm. and then we've we've got hate. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, and so. We've got to be talking to it. I'm, I'm just throwing that out to the mm -hmm. table and say, let's talk about it from that perspective. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, racism is built into the fabric of okay. our economic system. Okay. I mean, ra racism was created, you know, as a, for mm -hmm. an, as an economic tool, mm -hmm. and and so it, it's pervasive in all our institutions, mm -hmm. whether it's you know whether it's the schools, the churches, the right. the uh, media, what what have you. So everybody has elements of it with them, and so so when when a a hater. <laughs> <laughs> that really is out there, you mm -hmm. know, like we're going to build a wall, we're going to ban these Muslims from coming here, mm -hmm. we're going to we're going to clamp down law and order, mm -hmm. you know, get out there with your billy club and mm -hmm. and knock those thugs mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. In chief, we got the bigot in chief in the White House. It brings out this this you know the latent racism into mm -hmm. into over like a festering, racism. Festering, mm -hmm. you know. but I don't think we can we should be uh, calling on the government to restrict people's speech okay uh, because it'll be used against our side okay uh, it has mm -hmm. more more often been used against our side than on okay. the other side I think that, that that the solution is to is to mobilize the people uh, you know to, in large numbers mm -hmm. to to confront this Mm -hmm. viciousness on the other side and mm -hmm. and and we've seen that we we actually that they go back in their holes that they mm -hmm. get discouraged mm -hmm. when when they see you know overwhelming numbers on our side and i mean mm -hmm. that's that's what we that's what we saw there in the civil rights movement that mm -hmm. the clan went back in its hole you know mm -hmm. because but of the overwhelming that's one thing that bothers on me is that we do not want to 
take away another person's humanity just because they uh, had this capacity for evil. Martin Luther King ability, one, if you, it's very interesting if a person takes the time to listen to his adversary or his rival, right, just doing that in itself creates a sense of mutual humanity. And like when Barack Obama was talking about the aspirations for hope or the audacity for hope, when, when people are uh, encouraged to, to aspire, they have a tendency to act in a more humane manner. So we, we don't want to turn our adversaries into two-dimensional objects and start accusing them like death and cheat. No. We have to find a way to touch that, that nerve that we all have. You are equal to me. Mm -hmm. I'm human. You're home. You have a human spirit. I have a human spirit. This is a big mothership. This mm -hmm, planet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have a big responsibility with finite resources. We as a species are only four million years old, but we're still we're right at the precipice mm -hmm. of destroying our own livable habitat, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. Chernobyl. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have those resources. Mm -hmm. Now things like alligators and sharks mm -hmm. and insects, they'll survive. Mm -hmm. We won't. Mm -hmm. And unless we can take on an attitude that we're all crew members of this mothership, we're going to have people with these psychopathic uh, behaviors that live only in an immediate moment to gratify themselves. That was one of the major elements in uh, the 2008 major recession, which was actually a mild depression. Mm -hmm. Is that you had people that were given loans for 125% over value, that's a big risk. You had one company that underwrote 60% of the loans on the whole planet. Only a few individuals really uh, were uh, benefiting from that. Mm -hmm. But everybody's in this big churning per piranha tank, churning up, eating each other up, while the guys that own the piranha tank, they're sitting outside watching the show. Mm -hmm. So again, mm -hmm. here I go again, hate mm -hmm. and racism. Really? Yeah. Okay, one, here we are discussing this today. Right. I imagine it goes all the way back to Lincoln. Well, yeah. <laughs> and we'll go well that before part. Lincoln. And we've been ha mm -hmm. they've been having that discussion in each administration mm -hmm. aspect of it. Right. And so here we, again, like I say, here we are today, mm -hmm. and you're right. I mean, you know, it, it's a push-button mechanism now. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got nukes, and everybody wants more nukes. So who's going to be behind these nukes from a futuristic standpoint? You got me? And even here in the Portland area, we're going to, mm -hmm. we're going to look like we're going to be taking a short break. Okay. And I really want us to start focusing on some of the, to relate the, what we're talking about with some of the issues that were here in the Portland Metropolitan area. It's the largest city mm -hmm. in the state of Oregon. And there are some things that I think we can bring out. For instance, like well, gentrification. Like we we go to the, break. But no, we, we can't. We're going to okay. break and then we're going to come right back. Okay. okay? We're going to take a break and we'll okay. take it right back. Okay. Right. Thank that. Mm -hmm. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back, folks, to Oregon Voters Digest. Bruce Broussard, your host. Uh, we're talking about hate and racism. Hate and racism. And again, like I said, uh, this thing that has brought this thing on now, is, in all due respect, is the uh, our present president, uh, uh, President Donald Trump. And again, like I said, uh, this, this, this so-called talk has been happening ever since Lincoln. <laughs> Hmm. in every administration, and we've been doing the same mm -hmm. thing. But we get a little desperate now. we got too many nukes out there. we got too many nuclear lures that are out there, and you never know what's going to happen. So there's an urgency. So maybe the, the, the racism and the hate 
will probably have to say, hey, look, we better solve this thing so we can t- deal with some of these larger issues, like economics, like jobs, like all these other things that we've been, that we are in need of, and, and naturally population is increasing, we've got all kinds of things. So anyway, we've been talking a little bit about that, so uh, we're going to take it from a national standpoint and, and whatever, we're going to just kind of try to identify some of the issues that are, that are here within the state of Oregon and more specifically Portland, Oregon, because this is the largest city in the area. And I've got two guys that has got some good background because they've been on the feet. They've been out there as activists. When they, they're not activists, just people, community. I mean, working in community, trying to deal with some of the issues that, we, that, that the little people and everyday people live every day. But that less than 5%, that's not an issue. I like to say rank and file. <laughs> it was on rank and file? <laughs> rank and file. Okay, okay good. Rank and file. I say mm-hmm. file and rank. So. Okay. <laughs> okay, no problem. No problem. No argument from okay, me. Okay, good, good. Okay. Well, let, let's, 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 let, let's, let's identify some areas here that, 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 uh, that related, if you will, to the mm-hmm. whole issue of, of race and, uh, and hate. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I think about the Joy, Joy Gibson was, mm-hmm. a, was a guy who picked up the, the permit if you will, they mm-hmm. have the they had the demonstration over here. Yep. It was something comparable mm-hmm. to share at Charlottesville. Oh yeah. I mean I mean yeah, Charlottesville. Yes, it was very comparable to that deal. Yeah. And then that income was kinda of, the, the outcome of that was kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Right? You got me? Well uh, on on the fourth of June, uh Joey Gibson uh brought his folks out. It, w- it was uh, it was a week after the, the uh, stabbings on the Max, the, the right. their murders yeah, they, on the Max, right. which were uh, racially motivated, and uh, so so, 1,500 uh, Portlanders came out, you know, against against hate and against white nationalism and against mm-hmm. and against racism, um, which was fabulous. Uh, Joey Gibson has not uh, gone away, however, you know, he's continued <clears throat> to mobilize his people. Um, because this, this this is not this is not the the creation of one person Joey Gibson or even one person Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it is it is as we said this this economic desperation that that even some of the um, some of the Nazis they 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 put forward a, a a program that almost sounds left wing. You know, they say we're for universal health care or we're for a living wage or we're for uh, you know free college education, but for white people. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like it's like this national socialism. Uh, you know, so there's there's people that that understand that we need something. More, you know, we need we need lower rents. We need better health care. Mm-hmm. Um, but the problem is, we're getting these people are taking them from us, mm-hmm. uh, rather than seeing it that that's you know it's the one percent. And so uh, yeah, we need that we need that dialogue. But at the mm-hmm. same time, uh, when when people are provoking violence. And but try you, to take over our streets. Well, I was wondering. Wait a minute. On that same point, now mm-hmm. you can just throw it out in there. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I interviewed Joy here. Mm-hmm. Oh, you I, did? I, I interviewed Joy and I interviewed Joe Walsh at the same mm-hmm. time, okay. but separate, you know, 30 minutes yeah, each, yeah, yeah. To, which is very interesting. Mm-hmm. Joy's position was that, Bruce, we don't identify with those folks. Right. I'm just, but I'm just saying. That, no, so so if that's the case and if he's made this statement, mm-hmm. then let's go on and separate that group. And let's deal with it. In all due respect, I'm gonna I'm going after them mm. to interview them now mm. for a minute. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just I'm just. But my point is that uh, we talk. We're trying to get it to a solution. If we got one guy that's saying that they're not mine, and then so it's like saying, okay, fine. If that's the case, then I take it there are some areas here that you agree him. over here. Yeah, but, but I'm just saying we're mm-hmm. gonna have that debate. You know what I'm saying? Okay, but, but I'm, I'm just throwing that out there yeah. because mm. well, that is like a major piece. To draw upon my experience as the uh, Portland chapter chair of Oregon Action. And uh, the narrative has to change. And we have to understand that since Metzger, Metzger was pretty good at organizational management. And when you're in a war, as we are, for the dignity and humanity of man, of humanity of man and women, that they're going to be a propaganda element. You remember what Trump said about labor, he's going to do this for labor and that for labor. That never came to fruition. But it was the propaganda that instilled the seed that this guy is saying what we want to hear. Okay. Right. In Portland, Oregon. Right. Now, okay. okay. I'm talking Portland, about Oregon, people across the board. I'm just talking about propaganda per se and how we work as movements and coalitions together to combat propaganda, okay. Okay. and we have to look at this as another movement. Mm-hmm. You see what I mean? If we don't 
give it context and breadth, we're going to keep trying to use the same tools and skill sets that have been co-opted already. You know, of uh, the thing about nonviolence, that's been co-opted. And they try to pre- present themselves, oh, we don't want to do anything to anybody. You know? That's, that's what Joey co- Gibson says. He yeah, said he's nonviolent. Yeah, mm-hmm. As long as we're separated, we're cool. The only problem is when the two uh, parties come together, you have toxic outcomes. That's why I was glad when they had the uh, protest this summer when they said put a swath between the Antifa and the, uh, well, I guess. Patriot what, prayer. Preacher prayer. Yeah. So we have to, this coalition has to be built. Mm-hmm. And the coalition has to analyze the movement from which we're trying to uh, combat. Okay. For a lack of another okay, word, okay. we okay. have to dismantle it, okay. and it has to be done with the understanding of the human psyche, as well as appeal to our spiritual needs, okay. regardless of how you want to okay. interpret that. Okay. There is a mystical element in all of us, okay. and if we cannot meet those needs, we're always going to be in direct conflict. Okay. People are predators, okay. and we're violent. Okay, now. Mm -hmm. Again, here from a local standpoint, Mm -hmm. a lot of people are not familiar with the history, Mm -hmm. young people especially, right? Because they're not being taught in schools. You know what I mean? They don't. Don't. don't, don't, A lot of young people go to college. I I have to. I have to say I don't agree with that. Wait a minute. minute. Uh, I work with educators. But the majority of the people don't go to college. Well, regardless, okay. the kids are getting a much different no. education today. No, if you go to these the point schools, I'm asking you. No, I'm telling you something, because we disagree on this strongly. You're I functioning on the assumption that children are not being informed. Children have access to much more accurate information historically than we did back in the 50s so, and so 60s. So are you suggesting, that, you're suggesting mm-hmm. that they are very familiar, if I were to say, if, if I were to say the Civil War and the, and the, and the, the after effect of the Civil mm-hmm. War through, the, through this time, you're saying that we got, what, what majority do you think of our young people? I'm thinking about familiar? the kids that just go to the movie and see Lincoln. That's an informative movie. Well, when do they do that? When they go into movies. What, what movies? There's, there's all kinds of teachers. Uh, this, this, okay. seems, this seems to be a circular. Do you have your belief set? That's fine. All I can tell you, I work with educators. Okay. I work with young people. Okay. They're much more informed. Those are the youngsters that do Black Lives Matter. Those are the young people, 35, 40, and under, that quit their jobs. Okay. Making sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year and go around and document produce brutality. Okay. You understand? Okay. okay. So to assume that they don't care or that, that they're not informed is a wrong headed assumption. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. So we don't have an issue then of race and race I know said that didn't say the race. We do have an issue and but it it's a relate? very Small minority. Yeah, but yeah, we school, keep okay, overlooking okay. during Barack Obama's administration. Okay. There was a kid that went to a Bible study where they prayed for him and he killed him. You know who gave him that gun? His parents hmm. for a birthday present. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So some people just can't reach. Okay, but I'm still going back to the fact. Are mm-hmm. you saying then that that it is being taught yes. in the schools? Yes. Formally in American history. I would. Yes. It was taught to me when I was in high school in 1968 at Washington High School. Is it being taught? And to come, I have textbooks from books that I picked up that the kids are much more informed okay. and the teachers or curriculum does entail that information. Okay. So this is so, not 1960 so in, or 70. So in Portland Public Schools, right. we are teaching the kids American history as it relates to the Confederacy, uh, the, what the Confederacy flag is all about, the Lincoln era aspect of it. And all these other different variations and whatever. Am I? Am, I'm just throwing some out. Well, I'm trying to tell you. You said yes. Yes, and okay. I'm. But you, you keep okay. overlooking one critical er- okay. element. Okay. They're much more informed than we were. They're not functioning with the data or the information you and I grew up on. Okay. They have much more accurate information, and it's all over the place. I would suggest that you just go to a high school and pick up a history book and you see for yourself. Okay. Well, let me, let me ask Jamie the same question. Okay. Well, it, it is not my impression that the history is taught uh, f- 
uh, about the about the the movements and the mm -hmm. uh, the way the actual uh, mm -hmm. the people power that created the mm -hmm. social right. change that it was it's it's still basically a, a great a great man uh, mm -hmm. model of how history were, happens. You know, mm -hmm. Lincoln freed the slaves rather mm -hmm. than that. There were all there were 200 slave rebellions, mm -hmm. and that the that that the that the, the rebellious slaves demanded to join the right. Union Army, and uh, that you know that they did, and they won, and because of that, the the war was mm -hmm. won, and mm -hmm. and slaves mm -hmm. were free. You know those, those there's there's different ways of looking at history, mm -hmm. and it seems to me that that there's still there's still that you know great man model mm -hmm. of of history. Um, and, you know. It, well, Lincoln was well, a man. Wait, 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 let, let okay. get to his piece. Let get to his piece. And, and that as people, uh, I, I think people have access to more information through right. the internet. Mm -hmm. um, right, right, right. right. But, but also people get siloed in the internet uh, to mm -hmm. a particular point of view and right. they, don't, they don't see uh, a big mm -hmm. picture. But it's pretty hard to ignore the fact that since the Trump administration, uh, since the inauguration, there have been some huge mobilizations, mm -hmm. right? Uh, like the Women's March or mm -hmm. the... Well, the lady that got killed in, in the march. Oh, oh, in, in Charlottesville. Yeah, 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 when yeah, she yeah. made the statement, is there something wrong here? And when she made that statement, when Trump just got uh, elected back in November, and the statement her mother made. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay. But okay. The, mm -hmm. but there have been. The, She's the, only 32 years old. There's many more people that haven't been active mm -hmm. that are getting active. Right. Um, we just saw yesterday in Boston, mm -hmm. 40,000 people came into the streets. 40,000 mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. into the streets mm -hmm. against the uh, the ra the white nationalists, the racist bigots, the the Nazis mm -hmm. that were that were trying to mobilize in the city of Boston. That. We haven't seen that kind of mobilizations mm -hmm. against racism in mm -hmm. this country since mm -hmm. the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think we're going to see something like that in Portland on September 10th, which is when Joey Gibson is bringing his next round okay. of uh, mm -hmm. a, a challenge to the yeah. city of, cult, you know, to the liberal right. sissies yeah, Portland. in Portland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he, he initially called it a uh, Portland Freedom March Southern Edition and said that he was bringing Billy Sessions, who is a Confederate monument defender from New Orleans, who was in the mm -hmm. streets fighting hmm. Antifa to defend the Jefferson Davis mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Confederate mon mm -hmm. monument in New Orleans. He was bringing Billy Sessions to bring a Southern addition okay. to this movement uh, to Portland, which is, you know, it's a pretty serious development with, with the, uh, the Revy boys from mm -hmm. the South mm -hmm. coming to join the Proud Boys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the Northwest, mm -hmm. you know, the white homeland mm -hmm. idea in mm -hmm. the Northwest mm -hmm. and the bring, you know, the South will rise again. Mm -hmm. But because of of pushback mm -hmm. uh, from our, you know, various right. rallies since right. 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 Sar right. right. he's right. changed the, his Facebook page. Mm -hmm. So then now it, it, it doesn't mention Billy Sessions and it says Portland Freedom Freedom March, entire nation, mm -hmm. bringing people from all over the nation to help us change the culture here. Hmm. So. Mm -hmm. It's propaganda, like you right. say. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. we know what's really happening. Mm -hmm. What's who's really coming? Mm -hmm. Who's going to be there in that mm -hmm. rally? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, he he presents himself as I'm, well. I'm I'm a moderate libertarian. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. know why these people show up. Mm -hmm. in my a reasonable man. <laughs> now, what about the third element? You know, the element we we're talking about that normally causes all the problems. Are they being are are they being marketed to or advertised to to attend this rally? <laughs> Without oh. a doubt. Yeah. It's, it's, we're talking about a commodity when we start talking about this movement. If you look at Metzger, how he developed his following. Well, I heard you. You understand? Yeah, we heard, yeah, you see that. He approached it as an advertising commodity. Okay, thing. okay. And he picked and chose vulnerable in, individuals. In the book, A Hundred Little Hitlers, there's one thing that is, that is, is, is really disconcerting. There was a young man whose grandmother was Indian, and he was a very strong adherent and supporter hmm. of Mexico. Hmm. You understand? Hmm. But he's, he was, a, in reality, a minority yourself. You know? It's just like, well, I'm not going to go there. Yeah, okay, well, okay let, let, me, let, let me get back. I, but I, I also get... want to talk about, like, the work session. How do we work through hate? How do we deal with a movement that will dismantle this... Uh, 
popularity. Well, we're talking about it right now. He's saying that we, we, we're going to have another demonstration. Mm -hmm. That's part of such such day. How do we deal? How do we deal with the fact that uh, the announcement has been made mm -hmm. throughout the country, mm -hmm. and anybody can come, mm -hmm. and we've seen the results of a similar kind of thing with, with, with uh, Charlottesville. Okay. But we also saw a different Let result me, in Boston. I'm, I'm just something. saying. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just saying, how do we deal with that in Portland, Oregon? Well, in a nutshell, is a okay. matter of what you call public safety. Okay. I attend weekly meetings either on a, what they call the Peace Community Collaborative, which uh, specifically deals with youth violence, and then there's an interface uh, forum that I attend. Those two forums, we have, uh, like, the chief of police, Marshman, was there. Mm -hmm. uh, on occasion, mm -hmm. uh, the mayor, Wheeler, will attend. And this is approach when you have these types of challenges as a matter of public safety. Okay. There's way more to it than just uh, having one component, which is very important, of organizing and expressing discontent. There's another one of keeping the public peace. And sometimes we have to work with law enforcement, like I was talking about the SWAT, to keep those two combatants from actually getting into a violent conflict. Sometimes we have to do that through the processes of our government. And we have to work with certain people in the government. Uh, we are a republic. Okay, well, let's, let's get it. I, 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 I like and as a republic, yeah, but we, but we the people are responsible I got some more questions for our own ask. government. Okay, let me, I got some more questions. The other mm -hmm. thing is that, again, talking about the, this event that's coming, right. that's, that's mm -hmm. the most important piece right, right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They did implement this one program where they kept them on side. That was on 82nd. Mm -hmm. That's right. They kept them on both sides. Mm -hmm. But when they came to this event, the, the event that Joy did the other mm -hmm. day, they didn't. Right. They just allowed them just, it's a free-for-all. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. It was okay. a free-for-all. It was on the 6th. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. on the 6th, right. right. So now we're getting ready to have this one, mm -hmm. okay? What do we want to implement? Do we say a free-for-all or do we say a divide? And if you're saying, well, we need to educate the public because that's exactly what we're doing right now. I mean, mm -hmm. I didn't even know about mm -hmm. that piece that you were just talking about mm -hmm. that's coming up, see? Mm -hmm. And we need to really let the public know what's going on. Mm -hmm. So if all of a sudden, a lot of times, something happens and everybody want to rush downtown and see what's going on. Mm -hmm. See, yeah, they right. need to know what is going on. Mm -hmm. So what, what, what approach should we take now? Is it one where we divide both sides, identify both sides, say, okay, fine, you're on this side, you're on this side, and you march down the street, blah, 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 or do we say it's a free-for-all and just look at it? Well, I can tell you that, that our coalition, the Portland Stands United Against Hate, okay. and I encourage people to go, go to our Facebook page to see what's going on, okay. Portland Stands United Against Hate, is developing a, a security you know, apparatus to keep people safe, okay. you know, to, to, train, to train folks to be on the outsides and the front and the back of our, of our march so that... So, that, so uh, you'll have individuals there? You oh, have yeah. a security force, okay? Yeah. Okay. yeah. No, I, I, um, we're we're in contact with the police, and we're not. Mm -hmm. uh, they're telling us that they mm -hmm. that they intend to intervene, uh, unlike previous. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I, our experience with the police in this town is, is mixed. Okay. Yeah, 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 <laughs> to yeah. Say the least. Yeah, so yeah. you know, we really have we really have to uh, mm -hmm. provide for our own security. Okay, okay. And and uh, and and mm -hmm. and assure people that. That we'll have, that we'll, that we'll train and we'll be trained. Right, right. But if that third party is in your element, will you deal with that person? Third party. The third third party, whether it be a, a whatever. Well, well you know. Mm -hmm. the, 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 yeah. Well, the, the, you know, we're, we're mm -hmm. training de-escalation techniques. Okay. Okay. Right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But uh, again, we also have to figure out a way to present an alternative. You know, right. to mm -hmm. to everyone, right. but mm -hmm. uh, even you know, to pull pull people from the other side mm -hmm. to say. Yeah, we do need free college education. Yeah, we mm -hmm. do need living wage jobs. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do need to. We need rent control mm -hmm. uh, for everyone. You know, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the the most effective way that we are made powerless is mm -hmm. by being divided yeah. against yeah. each other yeah. and mm -hmm. seeing seeing our neighbor as the enemy rather than the mm -hmm. the one percent mm -hmm. which is stealing the goods. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's how. What power, do you think? What do you think work. about that piece? Well. All I can say is from my interaction okay. and that the success of keeping them separated and the uh, consequences of allowing the two parties to come together should pretty much speak for itself. Okay. You can't always trust your oppressor, but when you're dealing with dynamics of power, there's a great movie called Cartoon uh, where the uh, Muslims are fighting the British and the British are 
you know, at odds. And one guy sends his emissary to get reinforcement, and the Muslim uh, sheikh sends the emissary's hand back on it to his uh, general with the man's ring on it. So, you see what I'm saying? I know. So, you have to be cognizant that trust is not always something that's going to come about, even though you have to work with people that have uh, hope to forge the same agenda, okay. uh, book, uh, what it's called. Let me ask you a question. So then, mm -hmm. it would be okay then mm -hmm. that if police recognizes mm -hmm. the KKK and the, those types of groups in either area, mm -hmm. they, they, they <coughs> should actually take, they, they should intervene right then and there as opposed to waiting until we What do you mean by intervene? Intervene, I mean, just arrest them. If they got, find out whether or not they've got mm. weapons or anything mm -hmm. of that nature, if they're, if they're carrying something that denotes but, saying it's time to do the hit or whatever. That sounds gonna, like sci-fi. That's almost like putting people in jail just because they're thinking something. Well, but what if, what, <laughs> but what if had they intervened in Charlotte, in Charlotte, Virginia that way, you think we would have had that Well, issue? first of all, that's not how American governance works. Okay, so... And, I mean, we might not like it. It's just not how American government works. Yeah, but then it depends. What about the person who's killed? I mean... Well, there's you, casualties in every war. What about Martin Luther King? What about uh, Megar Evers? I'm, we're sorry they're dead, but they're casualties. And you have to understand there's always attrition and change. Okay, so we so here we go again. I don't know if there's any magic solutions. Uh, well, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying, you mm -hmm. know, cause, cause in Charlottesville, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the clergy uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, had had a some kind of a, a, a rally, and Cornell, well tell, uh, Cornell mm -hmm. West tells us that uh, if it hadn't been for the Antifa, you know, the, the black bloc right, uh, right, masked right. up kids, they would have been crushed by the Nazis mm. like cockroaches. Mm. And then mm. my, my comrades who were also in the um, in the in the, in the march, one of these marches was was uh, came into Justice uh, Justice Park and mm -hmm. they noticed a bunch of uh, young people with with guns mm -hmm. and these red bandanas mm -hmm. saying what's this? And it turns out they were on our side. Mm -hmm. They call themselves the Redneck Revolt. Yeah. Okay. Right. Wow. Anti-racist right. white wow. young people mm -hmm. with guns. Wow. Who who uh, ran, were ringing the park and and mm -hmm. and, and defending the the. Mm -hmm. uh, the protesters. Mm -hmm. on, on, at the same time, mm -hmm. the, the the Nazis were doing things like calling in false uh, bomb scares around mm -hmm. town so mm -hmm. that the police would be scattered. Right. Wow. So the Charlotte police mm -hmm. didn't have mm -hmm. they didn't have resources. the resources to mm -hmm. take care of mm -hmm. these 600, mm -hmm. 700, 800 mm -hmm. Nazis. Mm -hmm. So you know, like like Janny says, mm -hmm. yeah. How do you plan for that kind of thing? Well, I'm just saying, yeah, you know, you're not aware. Like I said, you probably wouldn't be aware of, let's say, the red bandanas right. until you actually have the event. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And then I'm saying, okay, if you see the red bandanas there, mm -hmm. should, should they come up and tell you that, hey, this is what we're planning oh, on? Oh, well, doing? actually, I know those people here. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so you, and you know, I also that's, know that's the good. Antifa folks. That's good. And, okay. we're trying to, okay. and we're trying to collaborate with them. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Well, okay. You know, then the other side politics often makes. Same thing. For strange bedfellows. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's fact. Mm -hmm. Right, that's right. I, I guess well, again, I think that the the, the 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 basic security is overwhelming numbers. You know mm -hmm. that if we have right. uh, uh, overwhelming numbers, that the uh, the other side will be mm -hmm. discouraged and mm -hmm. will not act out. You know, and we, we, have we, to we didn't spend that we didn't justice spend. will okay. prevail, even though it may be flawed. Okay. We still have to believe in the basic tenets of our American dream. Okay. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for everybody. Okay. But one of the other big subjects that we haven't talked to, mm -hmm. and we only have about three minutes or so, we may have to come back, and that, that takes a whole hour again. <laughs> <laughs> you always I does mean, this right at the, the end. Issue, okay. issue, right, here, what is it? Here within our community, we got we got uh, a gentrification issues aspect mm. here now. Mm. I mean, this is supposed to be the whitest city in the in the country. It's getting but whiter. Matter, but doesn't, getting doesn't that story get well, old well, after a well, while? Well, no, well, my point is that you still have people, mm -hmm. and, and the media is making it a point that it is an issue. Well, the media's got to make money now. Come yeah, on yeah. now. Well, make, <laughs> okay. well, 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 let me get my point. Paul. All it, right. It's a major issue. There are some mm -hmm. people out there that are suffering. Right. Time. Right. And so uh, we haven't addressed their issue yet in terms of solutions. Mm -hmm. And since you guys are so articulate, <laughs> okay. I want to make sure that we have another shot. Is this coming we're going to talk about this thing. <laughs> and you guys are going to be coming back down here so we can talk a little bit. I'm going to talk about that mm -hmm. part of it. Mm -hmm. Because I still think that the Portland Public Schools could do a little bit more 
about educating our, the populace. Well, I would take it upon myself to get some reason. educators and some young people so they can defend themselves. Okay. Because I'm, I'm a little old. Okay. You no, know, no. I, I was, got grandkids I, I was, I was old thinking, enough to teach those kids. I, I was just thinking about mm -hmm. the, the history. The history thing has always been an issue here mm -hmm. in Portland Public Schools, as long as I've known it. Yeah. Well, and, remember and, Avell Gordy. Mm -hmm. Avell Gordy went and had legislation induced introduced into Oregon legislature about curriculum for diversity. And what well, happened? She got it pushed through. She got it pushed through? Right. So where is it at? Well, it just might be like a lot of laws. It might not be funded. It might not be implemented. But the, the legislation is on the book. And that's what well, I know she's retired. We don't want to bring her well, here. What was the definition? The definition of what? It was the legislation. On what? On a diversity as a part of the curriculum for Oregon State Education System. And they just passed a law this, this session on uh, implementing ethnic studies in every school. Okay, ethnic well, studies. Is, 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 so. Well, you know, but, but nine times the folks, and I'm kind of talking about no, black folks. Down. I mean, down. black folks are kind of like making the statement mm -hmm. that I'm just saying to you, I mean, that's where the whole issue of race and, and. I'm taking you with me when I go and talk to Tina Kopech. We and her got a date. Uh, and, and you can ask, get straight from the horse's mouth, the house, speaker of the house, and you can ask all these questions yourself. No, we'll do that over here on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like to know. I want true transparency. Well, you know, I mean, and well, that's too much said, like work then. And, huh? get a, and, get a, and, and do me a favor. Maybe you can bring Avell and Tina together, hmm. and then we can just kind of talk about this. I respect Avell, she said. And her Tina, son right? says she was retired. And Tina. That's the woman. She's put in her time. She's done the work. Well, Let her live her life. Well, it's very simple. And you'll be the spokesperson. Well, I know you're going to be Bruce. No, you know, you'll you're be the spokesperson for it. No problem. No, I'm just. <laughs> I, I'm just saying that we've got issues around and people right. are looking for some sense of solution. legitimate. And we want to make sure that it is a community mm -hmm. across the board. I mean, I think we, a lot of people don't but like this idea. There's a younger generation of, taking lot, on the baton of, now, A lot of people Bruce. don't like this idea of uh, the idea of this, this is the whitest city. You know, they just like mm -hmm. to say, hey, look, this is Portland. You know, Why don't you get Maurice Henderson on here or uh, well, Michael Fox out of uh, mm -hmm. the mayor's office or C.D. Robinson, some of these young t uh, type, titans okay. that are actually on boots on the ground doing stuff like black men. TV. Okay. Well, well, that's why we have you here. Yeah. That's why we have. And that's why I'm putting it out on TV now. Mm -hmm. That's why you should have them here. No problem. Okay. Let's P do it. Pick them up. Make it happen. Pick them up. Okay. okay. Fine. <laughs> this has been great, guys. I mean, mm -hmm. really, is that we we discovered that piece again? Like I said, that's going to be an upcoming mm -hmm. event, mm -hmm. and you know, and you you basically got it right here. Mm -hmm. Basically, what's going to be happening at least on one side. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give Joy a call, mm -hmm. and if I can give Joy a call, I'll have him on the show. And we'll talk about the same concept, if you will. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now we have both of the major groups. Mm -hmm. Because it still concerns me about the fact when you open it up to everybody around the country, mm -hmm. you still got those folks that are sitting down there waiting to come. Mm -hmm. And not necessarily coming from our area, right? That's oh. right. So we need to make sure that we can at least do something about this piece. Okay. So with that, I want to thank both of you guys. I think we're at that point now, right, Dave? Yep. Yes, we are. At that point, thank you guys very much. It's been great. It's All right. a pleasure. Thank you. Just like it's thick and very robust. Okay.